We know the performance of k-means clustering highly depends upon number of clusters it forms. So in this video, let us explore one of the various ways to find optimal number of clusters. Hello friends, I am Dr. Vidhi Khanduja and today I will be discussing about elbow method. As I have told you, this method is used to find the optimal number of clusters. That is the best value of K in K means clustering. Okay, so first thing we need to understand in elbow method is WCSS. Okay, what this term stands for? This is within clusters sum of squares. Okay, let us first try to understand what this represents. Okay, let us say I have performed k means clustering with the value of k as 3. That means on some data set, if I have applied k means clustering, the output will be I will be having 3 clusters. Let's say this is cluster 1, this is cluster 2, and then Similarly, I will be having the third clusters with some data points in it. Okay, so let me draw some data points. This is a center or a centroid for this cluster. I am having some data points here within this cluster. Similarly, for second cluster, this is the centroid, let's say. So I am having these data points. For cluster three, C3 is a centroid and I'm having these points okay now one of the prime objective when i'm creating a clusters using k-means clustering is the variation within the cluster should be minimum right we all know that this is a prime uh, property of the k-means clustering that the intra-cluster distance what do you mean by intra-cluster distance? If this is the centroid, what distance, what is the distance between these two points, one of the data point and the centroid of that particular cluster. Similarly, the distance between this, the distance between these points, the distance between these, all these contribute to the intra-cluster distance. Okay, and finally, this one also. Okay, so within a cluster, the points should be closely or tightly placed. Okay, so this is the major property of K means clustering. Okay, whenever we are forming a cluster, right? So, similarly, for this particular, let's say for C2, this will be the intra cluster distance, right? What it tells me, it tells me about the variation within a cluster, right? And your WCSS is this thing, the total variation, if I'm taking, I'm taking this distance, I'm squaring it, right? And then you are adding it to the intra-cluster distance of this particular cluster. You square it, you add it with the intra-cluster distance of the next cluster. Again, the square should be there. This will tell me the total variation when I have performed the k-means clustering, taking k as 3. This term is your WCSS. Within the cluster, sum of square. I hope this is clear now. What we are doing? We are finding out the distance, right? From the centroid, to the different data points within a cluster, okay? And the sum of these, the sum of the square distance between each point and the centroid is your WCSS. Let's see this formula now. What we are taking, we are taking the distance, what distance between the points that belongs to a particular cluster, let's say C1, Right, so this distance is nothing but a Euclidean distance, right? And then we are taking the square of this term. Summation of all such distances. That means if I have taken 
this particular distance, right? This distance I'm talking about, or this distance, I'm taking the sum of all these distance. This will give me the intra-cluster distance for cluster C1. Similarly for C2 and C3, right? So depending upon the value of K, this WCSS will have the terms. Okay, so if I'm having K3, I will be having three terms here and so on, right? So we need to calculate this WCSS by taking different values of K, okay? So we select, normally we select the values of K from one to 10, right? And for each value, we find out the WCSS. Let's say, we start with k is equal to 1 first, right? And then we perform this, right, clustering. We will end up with a single cluster. You calculate the WCSS for that. What will be the intra-cluster distance? And note down that, okay, value. Let's say we will be writing like this for k is equal to 1. What value of WCSS will be there? Okay, let's say you get a value of 7,000. Okay, similarly, you take for k is equal to 2, you will end up with some value. You take k is equal to 3, then you perform the clustering, you will end up with three clusters. You find out the WCSS for that. Let's say I get the value 3,000 here. And you keep on performing, you get for 4, you take it for 5 number of clusters, then again you calculate the value. Let's say I'm getting 1,000 here right and then you perform for all such values till 10 okay and then you need to plot these values that graph that plot is going to give me the k the optimum value of k okay so let's say we have plotted this graph. So on x-axis, I have number of clusters, that is k. As I'm increasing the k, what value of WCSS I am getting? This is important, okay? So you should know the plot. The plot is between number of clusters, the k and WCSS. Within the clusters, the sum of squares, that is a variation, okay? We need to find out, again, I'm repeating what we are planning to do. We need to find out the number of clusters. Okay, so the optimal value of K. What we will do for different values, I'm plotting the graph. We observe as we are increasing the number of clusters, the WCSS is decreasing. Okay, similarly, when the K was one, this has a maximum value. Okay. So this kind of graph you are getting, it's a form of elbow. You can just see the arms and the elbow is there. There is a sharp bend. That bend point where there is a sharp bend is your elbow point. This is your elbow point. Okay. And this is the value of K, the optimal value of K. What value I'm getting? I'm getting five. So from this graph, I can make out the optimum value is five, right? I hope this is clear. So using this elbow method, what we have found, we have found the optimal value of K, right? Where there is the minimum variation, okay? Beyond this point, you will observe there is a very less decrease. You can see here the points. If we just calculate the values, it will be somewhat like 500. And then the decrease will be very less. For 9, you can just make out it will be 300. Then 250 probably. And for higher values also, the decrease is very less. So we need to trace out the bend where there is a bend. When you plot, you, will, you can easily find out that bend point, that elbow point. Because of this shape, this method is known as the elbow method. Right, so we see the graph rapidly changes at the point. 
creating a elbow shape this is a reason why this method is known as elbow method so this elbow point the sharp bend point will going to tell me the best value of k okay i hope i have made this concept clear to you all thank you for watching this video